So let's move on to our next speaker. He's none other than Dr. Carlos Romero Bundran. He's the head of the DRRM of UP Manila. Dr. Um, Gundran joined the Department of Nutrition as an assistant professor in June 2017 at the College of Public Health, University of the Philippines, Manila. He finished his BS degree in medical technology in 1993 and Doctor of Medicine in 1997, both at the University of Santo Tomas. He also finished um, residency training in emergency medicine at UP Philippine General Hospital in 2006 and MS degree in disaster medicine in 2014. He is currently a fellow of the Philippine College of Emergency Medicine. Dr. Gundran is also involved with pre-hospital care and EMS and had the following positions. He is the chair of the EMS and Disaster Medicine Committee of the Philippine College of Emergency Medicine from 2011 to 2017. He is the president of the Philippine Society of Emergency Medical Technicians from 2010 to 2014. Assessor, advisor of the Australasian Registry of Emergency Medical Technicians from 2008 to 2012. And he also became medical director of the following Life Support Training International from 2010 to 2015, StatMed Ambulance Service, and Transcare Emergency Medical Services from 2013 to present. His clinical and disaster related experiences are as follows. Um, M MS3 of DIM UPPGH, PR Consultant of Manila Doctors Hospital, Chair of the Community Disaster Preparedness Program of the Ugnayan ng Pahinungod, UP Manila, Disaster Preparedness and Management Coordinator um, of UPPGH, and Chair of the Disaster Risk Management Subcommittee of UP Manila. Um, he's currently involved with the UP Res Resilience Institute at, as well. So other experiences of our speaker were remote, remote site local physician of ISOS from 2007 to 2008, vessel emergency physician of a Norwegian seismic vessel. And he also became the associate field disaster coordinator of WHO or World Health Organization, Bicol Region. He's also the present convener of the Health Emergency and Disaster Study Group of NIH UP Manila. So ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome our speaker, Dr. Carlos Bundran. Okay, so my topic for today is the UP Manila DRM plan and how it can, you know, it can help the natural and cultural heritage museums. No? So my objectives for this you know, presentations are the following. No? What are the impacts of disasters and emergencies on museums and on museum collections? No? Uh, to describe the current UP Manila DRM plan and how it can it can be adopted by the natural and heritage cultural heritage museums, like for example the ICS, no, any incident commander, what are the strike teams, what are their roles and responsibilities, and an overview of the existing chapters based on specific hazards identified for the UP Manila plan. No? And then if we have time, I can I want to show you an actual or example of an application of this, you know, uh, UP Manila. In, uh, ano, incident command. No? So, earthquakes and museums and art collections are common actually. No? So, around the world, you can find uh, several museums and nat natural heritage affected by various types of hazards, either natural or human generated. No? So, tanggapin na natin, sooner or later, maaring maapektuhan ang mga museums natin or natural cultural heritage museums natin dito sa Pilipinas. No? So to talk about the UPMDRM plan, we now have the second edition just launched this year, no? the Disaster Risk and Reduction and Man Management Manual of UP Manila. No? So these are its table of contents and kung mapapansin nyo, ito yung mga uh, specific, ano niya, no? merong incident command system, and then your different hazards, the fire, typhoon, earthquake, explosive, security, biological, radiation, chemical, and the service continuity or continuity of operations plan. And then the annexes, no? so meron tayong mga references for that no? and mga charts kung kinakailangan. No? So ito yung organizational structure. No? Uh, under the office of the chancellor, syempre yung vice chancellor for administration, 
And then under that, the Health and Safety Committee, and under that is the Subcommittee of the RRM. No? And then, it is divided into two. We have the university, the uh, campuses, and PGH, which is the hospital. No? And then we have several, or we have four technical working groups depending on thematic areas, no? prevention, mitigation, preparedness, response, and rehab and recovery. So the technical working groups are the following for prevention and mitigation. Pinatoy lang namin siya sa RA 10121 eh, di ba? So kung DOST, ano ba yung counterpart ng DOST sa university? It's the research, no? So the lead is the Vice Chancellor for Research. For, for preparedness, siyempre ito yung action, no? Vice Chancellor for Administration. For response, uh, yung ba bawat incident commander ng bawat colleges, no? And then kung external, yung ugnay ng pahinungod, no? And siyempre, overall, kung uupo ang Chancellor, siya yung pinaka-incident commander for this. And then for recovery, yung planning CPDMO, no? And then yung Vice Chancellor for CPDS for Planning and Development, no? Which is Dr. T at the present, no? So ito yung mga technical working groups and sino yung mga lead sa kanya based on the university. So ano yung planning process? Uh, ito yung in-adapt namin, no? Yung assessment, formulation of uh, plans, review and updating every two years, no? And then siguro, test natin siya and then i-revise -re natin yung plan, no? Incident command system, no? Very basic then, no? Ano ba yung incident command system natin? It is composed of your incident commander and then meron kang four pillars which is your operation, planning, logistics, and finance or administrative. Including your public information officer, liaison, and safety officer. And then sa operations, andyan na yung iba't ibang task force or yung alam natin ngayon na emergency response team, no? <coughs> which is your uh, fire, uh, medical, evacuation, and so on and so forth. So, levels of acceptation, sino ba yung magiging incident commander na rin? No? Depende sa type of incident. Ito yung nakalagay sa UP Manilo, Manilo Manual. No? Is the incident localized only to a department of UP Manila College or Unit? No? Kung yes, ang incident commander, eh, department chair no? or highest officer on site. No? If not, does the incident affect two or more departments? If yes, Ang incident commander will be the dean or director, no? Nung office na yun, no? Does the incident affect two or more adjacent college? If yes, incident commander is the UP Manila Chancellor. If the incident is bigger than the UP Manila itself, involved yung whole UP Manila campus at saka yung surrounding communities, no? And then the incident commander could be the LGU, no? Or the UP president or the national government official. No? So, ito yung levels of activation and then sino yung ina-identify na incident commander depende sa uh, type of, ano, uh, depende sa degree of crisis. No? So, ina-identify natin dito sino ang incident commander or sino in charge kasi dapat iisa lang yung utak. No? Para ang kailangan natin sa incident command is unified yung response. Iisa lang yung ginagawa natin, isa yung purpose natin, hindi tayo nag-aaway. No? So what is the incident system command for? No? An incident command system is a standard on scene all hazards incident management system already in use by, ginagamit na ito tulad ng sabi kanina ng PDRMO, di ba? Internationally, ginagamit na ito. Ginagamit sila ng firefighters, ginagamit sila ng hazmat teams, rescuers, at saka yung mga EMTs, emergency medical teams. No? Kailangan natin ng incident command para magkaroon tayo ng order sa response natin. Disaster is characterized by mismatch. Sobra-sobra yung needs kesa sa resources natin. And number two, chaos. No? And the way you handle chaos is dapat meron kang incident command. No? Ano ba ang pinagsimula ng incident command? 1970s, the California wildfires, maraming damage. No? Maraming namatay. No? So, uh, dito, ang sabi nila, hindi naman dahil kulang tayo sa resources. Eh. Enough yung resources nila. Pero ano yung naging problema nila? Problems with coordination and communication hampered their effectiveness. Nangyari din yan dito sa atin, sa ano, sa Tacloban, ng Typhoon Haiyan. Lahat ng tao gustong magpunta sa Tacloban kasi yun yung kilala nila. Pero yung mga karating barangay, kulang na kulang sa resources. Ganito yung nangyari sa kanila. Merong duplication of efforts sa isang lugar pero maraming lugar ang napabayaan. No? So ito yung iniiwasan nila kaya nabuo nila yung incident command system. So, naghanap sila ng paraan in how to effectively coordinate interagency action and to allocate resources in dynamic multiple, multiple fire situations. No? And 
doon na ipanganak ang incident command system. No? So, ano yung characteristics ng incident command? Unified command siya. Isa lang yung nagde-decide. Isa lang yung objective ninyo. Limited span of control. Mahirap controlin lahat ng tao. So, meron ka lang uh, teams na under your jurisdiction. No? So, three to five. No? Meron kang chain of command. Hindi ka pwedeng dumiretso sa presidente. No? Meron kang immediate supervisor. Meron kang pagre-reportan. Meron magre-report sa'yo. There are clean line and staff responsibilities. Bakit? Diba? Iniiwasan natin yung chaos or gulo. Binibigyan natin ng order and kailangan natin ng incident command. In short, kailangan natin ng gobyerno para ma, ma bigyan natin ng solusyon ang chaos na nangyayari in an incident. No? So, command control, communication, coordination system and yung incident command natin is flexible. Ibig sabihin, isang classroom type of incident or isang bansa type of incident tulad ng Hayan, iisa lang yung sistema natin. Pwede mong i-expand. Yan ang ano, purpose ng incident command. No? So an ICS is based upon a flexible, scalable response within an organization providing a common framework para nagkakaintindihan tayong lahat. Para alam natin yung national response, manggagaling tayo sa university, di ba? Alam natin kung ano ibig sabihin ng ano ng firefighting team, ano yung objective ng medical team, di ba? Oh, so it is a flexible scalable response for organizations providing a common framework with which each people can work together effectively. Para alam natin ah ito, ito yung team na ito, ito yung purpose niya. Oh, Tutulungan dapat tayo, hindi dapat tayo nagpapagalingan or nag-aaway. Pareho tayong EMT, pareho tayong firefighter, pareho tayong police, hindi dapat tayo nagtatalo, di ba? Iba ang trabaho mo, iba yung trabaho ko. Tutulungan kita, tulungan mo rin ako. These people may be drawn from multiple agencies. Merong police, merong EMT, paramedic, merong ano, security, merong media, merong firefighter that do not routinely work together. Hindi naman sila lagi nakikita eh. And the ICS is designed to give standard response and operation. In an incident, magkikita-kita tayong lahat. And importante na dapat marunong tayong mag... Ano, makakilala natin yung isa't isa at alam natin yung trabaho ng isa't isa. Tulad ng lecture ni Prof. Tatel, may mga iba't ibang actors. And dapat alam natin kung ano yung role ng bawat actor. At irespeto natin sila. Dahil kailangan natin ang isa't isa para tayo ay magtagumpay. No? So what is an ICS for? No? To maintain control and rapidly organize the many different departments and groups in the university during critical situations. Ito yung, hindi lang sa university, no, but sa lahat ng incidents actually no? depende sa incident natin no? and katulad sa World War II no? kailangan mo ng incident command para i-organize lahat ng uh, attack teams mo para matalo mo yung ano yung axis di ba meron kang navy meron kang air force meron kang infantry kailangan mo i-organize lahat yan galing sa iba't ibang bansa i think 11 countries US Britain Australia New Zealand India o oh, lahat sila lahat sila nagtulong-tulong paano mo i-orchestrate lahat yan kailangan meron kang incident command. Dapat isa lang yung objective ninyo. Diba? Ngayon, sa UP Manila plan, sino yung makaka-activate ng incident command? No? The incident command system can only be activated by the following. Yung emergency response team marshal, or your department chair, or the college dean, or unit director, or the university chancellor. <coughs> now, who else can be the incident commander? Paano kung wala si chancellor? Paano kung wala si dean? No? Kailangan may incident commander. And the incident commander is always the person present dun sa scene. Di ba? Hindi pwedeng remote control. No? In a crisis situation where none of the above mentioned officials are present, command responsibility shall be on the highest university official who is in the area. No? And then, magre-report na lang siya dun sa nakasulat na incident commander. No? So, magre-report siya, tatawagin niya si Chancellor or si Dean. Depende kung gano'ng kalaki yung situation. No? Okay, this is an example of the incident command system in action. No? Nagkaroon ng isang incident sa UP Manila na kinakailangan ng tulong ng MMDA, kinakailangan ang tulong ng uh, MDRMO ng Manila, pati yung Philippine Army, mabay, ikikwento natin sa inyo. No? So, kinakailangan mag-organize lahat. Tulad ng sabi natin kanina, uh, different people, different organizations, different agencies, tapos yung situation ninyo, unfamiliar. No? Sa UP Manila sila mag-ooperate. So, importante, meron kayong organization, meron kayong incident command para isa lang yung objective ninyo at hindi kayo magtatalo-talo. Para hindi masayang ang efforts ng lahat. Okay. Composition of the ART. So, 
ERT Marshall, meron kang different team, evacuation, firefighting, search and rescue, medical team, communications, PIO, security, and others. No? This is just based on the uh, BFP manual. No? Ito yung emergency response team niya. Kasi ang pinaka-basic na exercise na ginagawa namin is fire. No? So, fire drill. No? So, ito yung pinaka-basic na composition ng ERT on how to respond to a fire. Bawat hazards may kanya-kanyang response team yan. Incident command post locations, it could be within the university, kung hindi damage yung university, or if damage na university, syempre outside the university. Ano yung requirements para sa incident command post? Dapat meron kang space, dapat meron kang mga maps, di ba? meron kang mga books, electronic devices, and means of communication to the different teams, either telephone, internet, or radio. So this is an example of a command center. This is the previous command center of the city of Manila. Huh? And this is nung... Sa UK, lumalo kami sa CIMEX, no, 2019, ito yung command center on how they organize the, uh, the simulation exercise. No? And kung titignan natin, ito naman yung command center nung actual operations sa exercise. And kung titignan natin, andito meron kang space, meron kang mga tao, meron kang mga maps. And then ang mga maps mo dito kung papansinin ninyo, merong projector sa taas na nakatutok yung screen doon sa table. And then pag titignan mo yung table, andito yung Google map ng area na tinatakel nila no so live makikita mo na gumagalaw yung mga tao mo na naka GPS no so ganyan ka advance ang kanilang command post no ganyan ka advance yung kanilang uh, battle tactics so kumbaga di ba roles of the incident commander and may trabaho ng incident commander responsible for all aspects of the response the incident commander develops the incident objective no save life save property Bahala na kung ano pa yung susunod na objective, di ba? Manages all incident operations and delegates specific tasks and responsibilities to subordinates. No? Kung, kina, kung minsan, kinakailangan mo mag-assign kung ano yung importante yung kailangan gawin. No? Or i-delegate mo. The incident commander communicates with top managers and politicians outside the university for proper coordination. So, katulad nitong ginagawa, no? Ang incident commander for this incident is... Dr. Mike T. No? Siya yung nag-act as incident commander at this point in time. No? Siya yung nakikipag-usap sa Manila DRMO, sa MMDA, sa Philippine Army, no? at saka kung sino pang dumating para tumulong during that time. Ngayon, let's talk about the different teams. No? Okay, I have 15 minutes. Firefighting team. Ano yung trabaho ng firefighting team sa emergency response team? Responsible for extinguishing building or equipment fire. No? So, ano yung members ng firefighting team? Meron kang head ng extinguisher team at saka meron kang head ng host team. <coughs> so, meron kang head at meron kang members no? for two teams, extinguisher at saka host team. Siyempre, dapat marunong silang gumamit ng extinguisher at saka ng host. No? Evacuation team. Ano yung trabaho nila? Responsible for evacuating building occupants in a safe, orderly, and efficient manner na hindi nagkakagulo. It directs everybody to master points and does a head count to ensure nobody is missing. Mahirap yung trabaho ng evacuation team. Kung minsan pasaway ang mga estudyante natin. Minsan kung hindi ka nagbibilang na maayos, maraming nawawala. No? Maraming pasaway ng estudyante. Ngayon, yung nawawala, hindi mo alam kung nagpunta lang ba sila sa Robinsons or naging victim na ba sila dun sa incident. No? So, members ng evacuation team, meron kang head, meron kang floor wardens, meron kang exit guide, Tsaka meron kang later searchers. No? Sila yung pinakahuli, titignan nila yung room kung meron bang naiwan. No? So, ang tawag sa kanila, searchers or sweepers. No? Exit guides, anong ginagawa nila? Dito po ang daan, tinuturo nila. No? Sa so, mga waypoints, dito po yung daan, doon po yung papunta sa evacuation area natin. Salvage team, ito siguro ang importante para sa inyo. No? Natural and Cultural Heritage Museums. No? Salvage team evacuate the building or area of its valuable contents depending on each area's priority. Kung kinakailangan, i-evacuate yung mga uh, treasures natin. Di ba? Search and rescue responsible for post-evacuation search and rescue in a planned coordinated manner in areas still considered safe. No? So, ang trabaho din ng search and rescue, kung may makita silang victims, sila yung magdadala ng victim sa first aid station for medical assessment and proper management. Again, merong team, head, at saka merong members. Medical or first aid team, no? responsible for managing physical, mental, and emotional problems among victims about, about by the crisis. No? So, yung medical team will establish the treatment area and then, syempre, UP Manila pinag-usapan natin eh. 
communicate and work with the PGH Emergency Medical Service or Ambulance kung kinakailangan magdala ng pasyente sa ER ng PGH. No? So, members ng Medical and First Aid Team is meron kang leader na naman and then meron kang First Aid Team members and then yung driver ng emergency vehicle. <coughs> So, itatredge mo yung pasyente according to priority. Red, yellow, green, or black. Diba? And then, you manage appropriately. Bakit kailangan natin itriage? Kasi limited yung resources natin. Kailangan mong ma-identify yung red tag patients para kasi ito yung mga pasyente, pag hindi mo minanage immediately, either magdi-deteriorate sila or mamamatay sila sa harap mo. So, kailangan mong identify kung sinong uunahin mo. Hindi first come, first serve basis ito. Security team, importante ang security natin, di ba? Cordon and traffic. Isolate and secure the emergency area and other important areas and allow emergency vehicles and authorized persons in the area. No? Hindi pwedeng maraming usyosero. Usong-usyo yan dito sa Pilipinas, maraming usyosero. No? Members, syempre, merong head, merong traffic officer, at saka merong lockdown officer. No? I-off limits mo ngayon yung building involved. Nagkaroon kami ng isang drill, no? Na hindi nila na lockdown yung building na maayos eh meron din kami si kaming actor na ang job niya is magnakaw. So nakapagnakaw siya ng dalawang bag at nailabas siya doon sa building, no? Dilil kami sa UP Manila, no? Communication team responsible for internal and external communications, no? So meron kang head and then meron kang telephone operator and personal operator. Sa PGH, ito yung PGH operator, no? Public information officer, syempre hindi ka pwedeng magsalita sa public ng mga unverified informations, no? So, instructed lahat ng staff, no, na kapag merong media, ituturo ito, idadirect ito sa public information officer. Kasi siya lang ang responsible for releasing information to the media. ERT marshals, no? So, sino ERT marshals bawat building, mayroon tayong ERT marshals, no? Emergency response team marshal. Ano yung trabaho niya? Organize, develop, and implement the safety plans. No? Assist the administration in organizing, training, and managing the ERT. Provide equipment, tools, appliances, and other supplies for ERT use. No? So, so, siya yung champion ng hindi lang actually safety, eh, no? but disaster preparedness ng bawat building. No? They conduct drills and supervise and coordinate the ERT personnel during drills and actual emergencies. No? Parang safety officer. Implement periodic inspection of the firefighting equipment to assure the ERT is adequately equipped. Conduct periodic safety inspection of the campus, premises, and properties. Deputy ERT Marshal, no? assist the ERT Marshal in all activities of the BRA. No? Assume the duties and, man and responsibilities of the ERT Marshal during his absence or incapacity to perform duties. No? So, Deputy ERT Marshal, kung wala yung assigned ERT Marshal at siya lang yun nandun, yun yung Deputy ERT Marshal. Anyone can be the Deputy ERT Marshal again, di ba? The highest building official available will be the Deputy Marshal or the Deputy Incident Commander. Okay, so Incident Management Team members, no? Ito yung uh, nasa UP Manila one well, and ito yung mga vest colors nila. Pagka ano, Incident Command, no? Deputy Incident Commander, Safety License, Public Information Officer, white yung vest nila. Pag operations, it is red and white. Pag administrative or finance, green and white. Logistics, yellow and white. Planning, blue and white. And then the different type strike teams, no? pag fire, red. Pag uh, medical, ambulance or triage, green. No? Evacuation is light blue. Salvage and search and rescue, both are orange. Pag security, gray ang color ng vests nila. O bakit kailangan natin ng colorized vest? No? Again, disaster is mismatch and chaos. No? Pag pumasok ka sa isang room, ikaw, pagpalagay natin ng MMDA, spokesperson, di ba? Gusto mong kausapin ng incident commander, hindi mo siya ma-identify. Bawat segundo na di-delay, di ba? Chaos causes delay. And delay, kung emergency at life-threatening, may be a few seconds, may be the difference between life and death. Diba? So, in order, to put, in order to put order in chaos, kailangan madaling makilala yung mga officers mo. Ah, ito yung firefighting team, kailangan kong kausapin to. Ah, saan ba yung incident commander? Ah, itong nakapute siya yung incident commander. Madaling ma-identify, di ba? Na sa save mo yung time, mas nagiging efficient yung response nyo. Nagkakaroon tayo ng order. And ito yung actually example sa mga vests ng UP Manila. No? Uh, firefighting, evacuation, search and rescue, salvage, and then the medical no? or the first aid. 
uh, code nomenclature, emergency code nomenclature. So, pag code blue, naririnig nyo ito sa pelikula, cardiac arrest, diba? Code yellow, trauma. No? Code triage, ito yung sa PGH, no? So, disaster plan activation, no? Magkakaroon ng mass casualty. Pag kinakailangan ipadala, magpadala ng team, ang PGH at UP Manila sa mga disaster affected communities outside NCR, code pa dayon, no? Pag may sunog, code red yan. <coughs> pag heightened security, code gray. Ang code gray, pagka walang armas. Ang code silver, pagka may armas. No? Code black, ito yung bomb threat at bomb scare. Code orange, ito yung hazardous material. No? Earthquake, code dindol. Floods and typhoons, code baha. And biological hazards, code high cap. No? So, tinawag namin lindol baha dahil hindi mo na naman kailang itago ito. No? Obvious, lumilindol na. but mo pa itatago? Ang delikado dyan yung fire at saka yung bomb threat. Kasi pag sinabi mong may bomba sa UP Manila, magpapanik ang mga tao. So, kailangan mo siyang sabihin true code para wala magpanik. So, merong mapping na in-identify mo yung mga evacuation areas sa UP Manila. No? So, ito yung mga identified evacuation areas. Kung minsan, kung kinakailangan isara yung mga kalsada, gagawin namin no? and ginawa na namin actually yan sa drill. Ito yung mga chapters. No? Fire-related emergencies, you can find it in Chapter 5. No? So, what to do in cases of fire within the university? Chapter 6 is flood and typhoon. Again, ano yung gagawin natin pagka baha or may typhoon? Usually, na laman namin na ang typhoon is more on communication drill. No? Kasi bihira mangyari yung talagang lulubog pati second floor ng UP Manila. Earthquake. No? What to do in the event of ground shaking and what to do in the aftermath of a strong earthquake. Eight, explosive related in times of bomb threat or bomb scare. No? So, ito yung bomb squad ng UP Manila. And I would like to ano, emphasize na na-develop namin ang, ang uh, code block ng UP Manila sa tulong ng UP Police Chief namin na si Major Elias Lagasca who was the previous Chief ng Manila EOD, Explosives Ordinance Division. No? Code Gray, no? aggressive combative person na unarmed. No? So, it's either verbal, psychological, or physical aggression. Uh, verbally, ina in ng aaway, di ba? Or psychologically, in-intimidate ka. No? Or physically aggressive. Talagang, ano, inaaway ka na. Physical lang, may contact na. Walang weapon. So, pag sinabi kasing Code Gray, anong objective? Lahat ng security, kukuyugin ang combative person na ito. No? Ire-restrain siya. Pag Code Silver, aren't assailant no? or hostage situation. No? Pag Code Silver, may armas kasi yung, as, yung, ano natin, yung assailant. No? So, ang SOP dito is, dapat i-lockdown niyo yung sarili ninyo. Dapat hindi niya kayo maabutan. No? I-lock niyo yung room ninyo. Di ba sa Amerika, uso yung mga school shootings, yun, yung mga Code Silver incident. So, ang prinsipyo sa Code Silver, pag nakarinig kayo ng Code Silver is i-lockdown yung sarili ninyo, lalayo kayo. Lalayoan nyo yung asailan. No? Security lang at saka yung SWAT ng Manila ang pupunta dun sa area kung nasan siya na-identify. Like for example, Code Silver, labi ng PGH. No? Biologic hazards, dealing with infectious microorganisms na nag-leak no? sa mga laboratories. Radiation-related hazards, dealing with radionuclear events within the universities, and chemical-related, dealing with hazardous materials within the university. <coughs> that is chapter 12. No? In chapter 13, the continuity of operations plan or the service operation plan. No? Ang service, public service operations plan, continuity of service operations plan ng UP Manila is paano i-continue ng PGH yung operation niya in times of calamities, di ba? So, ang question is, paano i-augment ng UP Manila ang resources ng PGH in case of the big one? No? So, ano yung pwedeng i-contribute ng College of Nursing, College of Pharmacy, College of Arts and Science, College of Public Health? No? Marami kasing resources, equipment, manpower, di ba? Mas students na pwedeng tumulong. So, that is the... Uh, way it was written, yung continuity of operation. Para mag-continue ang operation ng PGH after the big one, paano pwedeng mag-contribute yung different colleges? Na? And then, paano natin papakainin at iha-house ang mga ito para mangyari, mangyari lang siya? Okay. Uh, disaster plan, I have three minutes left, no? Uh, includes evacuation, protection, or recovery collections in the event of a disaster. No? Why plan? Kasi 
Museums care for resources in trust for the public and minimize risk to their collection, di ba? Having a strong disaster plan helps the museum safeguard billing staff, visitors, and neighbors, no? And it has financial implications. Alam ko, kanina tinanong kung magkano ba, no? Presyo yan. Unfortunately, kailangan natin presyo yan, no? Yung mga uh, priceless treasures natin, no? In terms of insurance. What to consider? Kailangan may staff participation tayo. The, the, uh, the process of creating the plan, kailangan may buy-in lahat tayo, lahat ng stakeholders. Each museum has its own set of challenges which requires thoughtfulness and planning. Unique ang bawat museum. Hindi pwedeng cut and paste lang. Pwede mong i-copy and paste pero kailangan mong upuan at tignan kung ano yung applicable at kung ano yung dapat mong i-revise para sa iyong setting. No? The planning should be integrated in order for it to be comprehensive. No? Emergency cleanup and salvage procedures, these procedures should be prioritized so that staff and emergency suppliers can use their time wisely and effectively. So, kailangan yung salvage procedures in museums and natural uh, cultural heritage museums. No? So, ito yung nasa salvage and rescue team namin. No? Order of priority. Paano? Ano yung priority? No? I-red tag, i-green tag, i-yellow tag natin yung mga bagay na dapat i-take out in times of crisis. No? So, classified records, data information, maps, and valuable pieces of equipment, priority two records, other classified, priority two supplies and materials, priority four office furniture, and other less important supplies. No? So, merong priority on how to salvage equipment or valuables in <coughs> times of evacuation. So, sinabi din natin kanina, importante yung makipag-usap kayo sa mga taong pwedeng tumulong sa inyo mag-restore. No? Hindi basta-basta nire-restore lang. So, kung, kung titignan natin, ito yung mga attempts on art restorations na hindi, ewan ko kung masasabi natin professional yung na-hire nila, di ba? Nasira ang mga works of art na ito. No? So, si Cristo, naging ganito na yung itsura niya. Itong nawala yung, itong night na ito, nawala yung, basta nawala yung ano eh, yung, yung aura niya. No? Pati itong, picture ng babaeng ito no kinulayan di ba ito na, ninakaw yung ulo ni restore pinalta ng terracotta nasira so importanteng alam natin kung sino yung makakatulong sa atin sa ngayon na makakapag-restore ng art natin in times of need no so this is, this is an actual event in UP Manila i have 30 seconds so merong uh, building na itatayo sana and then Unfortunately, nag ano siya, nag collapse siya, no? So makikita natin ito yung University Library ng Manila. And makikita natin ito yung ilalim niya, tubig na. So gumuguho actually yung paligid, no? Ito yung gilid. So kung makikita niyo ito yung asphalt, gumuguho na siya yung asphalt, no? Ah, so makita niyo yung water that is under this building, no? So tubig na, nakahang na lang siya. Oops, I, my time is up. And kung papasok ka sa loob ng building, makikita mo yung mga damage na pending ng mag-collapse yung building na yun. No? Bumigay na yung, ano, yung walkway. No? And kung titignan nyo doon, ito yung crack. No? Lumalaki siya. Ito yung crane na nandun, hindi na binawi ng contractor. No? Ito yung mga cracks na araw-araw binabantay ang lumalaki. So, sa loob ng building, makita nyo no? yung mga damage sa mga Ano? So, ang point dito is, yung library has, mo, 1910, 1890, kailan namatay si Rizal? 1896. So, baka nahawakan pa ni Jose Rizal itong librong ito, itong journal na ito. Marami tayong archives na actually treasures. No? Oh, tingnan natin yung mga dates ito, 1890. So, anong ginawa? No? Nagkaroon ng, so, siyempre, early warning, na-detect na possible mag-collapse yung university library, eh, pinapa-evacuate na lahat ng tao doon. Eh, paano yung mga treasures na nandun? So, kinakailangan ipatawag, humingi ng tulong sa mga pwedeng tumulong. MMDA, Manila DRMO, Philippine Army, dumating po sila at nag-convene at nagkaroon ng meeting para paano ilalabas yung mga valuable or treasure or mga archives natin na dapat isalba bago gumuho yung building. No? Kasi hindi natin alam kung tutuloy yung guho or hindi. So, they need to organize and it took, I think, three or four days na continuous operation. No? So, yun, no? in the end, uh, na-salvage naman yung mga books na kailangan i-salvage. No? And in the end, hindi naman gumuho yung 
building, no? Kasi naagapan na rin as much as possible. So, this is just one to story to share. Naging effective yung incident command kasi naka, ano na siya, naka-implant na siya dun sa kultura ng UP Manila because of the continuous drills na ginagawa in the past. No? So, for my reference for this presentation, in UP Manila, there are manual second edition and the following guidelines for disaster preparedness in museum, building an emergency plan, and developing a disaster preparedness emergency plan for American Alliance of Museums. No? So, I think hanggang dito lang po yung presentation ko. Thank you very much.